You know, I'm really excited about this makeover today. Is that because you get to work with me, the most marvellous husband ever? No, it's because we're going to the home of Monica and her husband Andy mm -hmm. and their two gorgeous little girls, Grace and Anna, who love to get out in the garden and dig and play with their worm farm. They like gardening and they're really trying, so I'm looking forward to helping them out. Yeah. So here we have it, hey? Yeah. You know what I like to see? A front garden that isn't all grass. They're obviously giving it a go. I mean, have a look at this. Nice veggie, veggie patch. patch. Yeah, and you can, they've got a, a compost bin. And this old table, we can give that a bit of a makeover and maybe make it a little bit more functional, because I can see they're obviously into kind of seeding things up they and are. Potting, up, potting, so. Yeah, they're having a go. They've got all the right bits. They definitely have all the right bits. And I mean, I quite like this passion fruit. And this layout coming into here is nice, isn't it? Yeah, Feel the arbor's really pretty. And this little path is nice. Well. Hey, look, the idea is nice, right? Could do with a little bit of work. You know, they've started. They have, and I think you can really tell from this space that they're into gardening. They just might need a little bit of help. You can just add a little bit of it's magic. It's a nice way of saying it doesn't look very nice <laughs> and we've got to fix it. We can help them. We can help them, I think so. Lovely. Why are we taking them out? <laughs> well, it is a shame. Look, this is the, the hottest spot of the garden, so having raised veggie pads and making this as productive as possible, this is kind of the location it has to go in, right? OK. And if we tried to move these, trust me, they'd die. Curry plant, lavender, rosemary, they would. But this can live on another day. So when you're trying to take propagation from rosemary, you need to tear it off because you want it actually to be torn, not a clean cut. Move the leaves, pop that in some potting mix, and you get to live on. Who would have thought I learned something new every day from you? I'm glad we got that on camera. <laughs> this front garden actually has five casuarinas in it, and at the size they're in at the moment, they're quite nice, but these are going to turn into massive trees. The problem with that is they'll shade everything out, they drop all these leaves, which raise the pH, and it's going to stop any growth underneath. So before they get too big, these are all coming out. So we know Monica and Andy and the girls love to get out into the garden and plant seedlings and have a bit of fun out there, but the shelving unit that they've got out the front was just no good, it's not stable and not functional. So. This table that I found, I'm going to turn into a potting table. The first thing I'm going to do is use this template to cut a hole in the centre for this trough. I picked up this planter box from Bunnings and it's perfect for this spot because I'm going to put potting mix inside, which means that this table will be perfect for the family to all gather around. There's so much workspace. The table is a really lovely hardwood teak, but it's looking pretty tired. So the next step in the process is just to give it a good sand back. With the mulch up and the stepping stones gone, this garden is looking so much better already, and we've got a huge amount of space here. But before the path goes down, I want to put in our destination at the end, and I'm using these. These are raised planters for our new veggie patches. We're going to pop them at the end, orientate them to the sun so they get maximum crop. I had a few options when it came to our pathway. Now, I wanted something that was super easy and simple to install, but I also wanted something that was permeable because we want the water to get down into the ground. This is a sustainable garden after all. So I'm going to be doing it with gravel. Now, the first thing to do with the gravel pathway is to put down some weed mat. That stops any weeds coming through. And then before you put the gravel down, you need to get some of this. This is called shore pave. You can just grab this from Bunnings. It's like an interlocking grid system that stops the gravel from feeling like you're walking on soft sand. The thing I really like about this system is you don't need very much skill at all. You don't need to know how to do any hard landscaping, really, because it all just clicks together in a really simple system. So you can do whatever shape and size you want to suit your own garden. It's a bit like doing Lego outdoors. The 
what a transformation. It looks like a completely different table. And check this out. Under here, I got the guys to make me a frame, which I'm going to put a shelf on, which will then act as storage for the family for all of their gardening bits and pieces. And it will also brace the table to make it really sturdy. The timber has come up really beautifully, but because the table's going back into the garden, I'm just going to use some garden furniture oil to seal it and protect it from the elements. I can't wait to see this potting table all decked out. I think the family are going to get so much use out of it. I come bearing gifts for you. Where have you, you been? I've been busy with my table. It's looking great. Ah, I'm busy getting some plants in this thing. They look great, and I think they're so perfect for the children to be able to access and plant and harvest. We've got things like strawberries, which are perfect for spilling over the edge. But you know me, I love tomatoes. They're perfect to get in the ground now in spring. This one is called Apollo, so it's an early fruiter. It's going to give them loads and loads of fruit. It gives us a bit of a backdrop from down our path. We've got loads of stuff in here, purple carrots, stuff to really give the kids, really start their imagination in gardening, you know? All right, are you going to dig with me? I sure will. OK. The garden is looking great, but what's happening with your path? Hey, good things come to those who wait. It's not finished yet. Everything's coming along really nicely, and I've got a couple of other projects that the kids will absolutely love. They've got a bit of a magical theme to them. Like so many of our gardens, this garden bed had not had any love in what looked like well over 100 years. I don't think it had even seen a fork. So we've incorporated lots and lots of compost and dug it through to bring some air back into it. I'm also using a soil wetter. This ensures that new rainfall can get into the ground and our plants will establish quickly. And for our planting scheme, I'm going for a mainly native theme. For the big plants, we've got some really lovely banksias with the white underside to their leaf, but then I'm also using a native frangipani. That's going to give us height. For the rest of the plants, we've got emu bush, lots of grasses, and to bring in some native wildlife, these amazing grevilleas. I just love the flowers on those. If you're after an interesting flower, you can't really beat the kangaroo paw. I'm using bush bonanza and then a little pink one called bush pearl. Now, kangaroo paws don't really like humidity. They're perfect for a Western Australian climate, but if you're growing them in any other state, instead of just removing the flower spike, take out all the leaves that are associated with that flower spike. That increases airflow, stops the black spot problem, and you can enjoy the flowers for years to come. I'm loving all the native plants that Charlie's putting in the front garden and I thought to attract even more native birds and to invite them to stay a little while, I would create a one-of-a-kind bird bath. So I'm just using a basic terracotta bowl that I picked up in the gardening section at Bunnings and I've sealed it inside and out. And while I was there, I found these beautiful glass pebbles. They were just in the craft section and I thought they would be perfect for this job. I've got some glue here and I'm going to start with the centre pebble and then work my way out. So you might need a little bit of patience, but before you know it, you'll have this beautiful artwork emerging right before your eyes. The next step is to get some white grout, but instead of mixing some water through that, like you usually would, I'm going to use the same sealer that I used at the beginning to seal the bowl on the outside. So once you're happy with the coverage, you just need to take a sponge with some water and start to clean it off, which will reveal the beautiful mosaic underneath. You need to work pretty quickly because it dries really fast. It's like the garden's already bringing in some wildlife, which is good. To add some more, I'm bringing in Juliet's bird bath, and I'm just putting it on this stand. I've added another ring in, which I just got from Bunnings in the garden centre section. I'm going to fill this with soil. And plant it out with lots of colour, like the Kalankoe and the native Brachycoe. transformation. This looks amazing. Ask and you shall receive a throne for your bird bath. 
What do you think? Yes. <laughs> I know bling isn't your thing, but I love it, and I'm sure the birds will as well. The last thing I've got to do in my garden is finally put some pebbles down on top of this grid. Now, I've left this till last so it doesn't get dirt all over it. And I've used a Western gold pebble because it ties in perfectly with the tones of our native planting scheme. to create a functional garden, but we also wanted one with lots of magic and mystery for the little girls. So I promised Grace and Anna a little secret hideaway where they could come out here, and I've created a fairy village. Now, if you want to do this at home, it can be as simple or as elaborate as you like. You could just add some steps, because all fairies need to get into their home. And this is just a log that we've sliced up and glued together. You could create your own door, and this is simply just some garden stakes which we've glued together. And then as the door knocker, I've got a little draw pool and this sweet little owl, which is also a doorknob. And that will just sit behind our steps. Or if you want to go all out, you could create a fairy mansion. We've just used a tree stump and then we've created a little ladder for the fairies to get in and out. And there's even a swing to keep the fairies entertained. Perfect little wheelbarrow for your new table. And how good does that look? Yeah, it's a much nicer space, much more practical for them as well. Do you remember what this looked like when we turned up? This garden had so much potential, but nothing else going on. And it's completely transformed. I love the native planting. It's low maintenance and it's really sustainable. Yeah, and so many great spots for the family to gather. Mm. You can really see the girls playing over at that bird bath. Yeah. And they've got this beautiful veggie patch. And then this combined with your table is just fantastic. We know they love to grow their own food. And for them, this is the perfect size. It is, and what about this? Well, you know, I think it's about time we got out of here or our fairies might arrive. Oh, my word! <laughs> wow. Oh, and look, there's a bird bath, so birdies can sit on there. Look at this oh. special fairy garden. Oh, my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> Mom, look. Yeah, what, Bobby? Yes. Anna, there's a little house something here. something else. And look, the butterflies come to visit fairy. Wow. Juliet and Charlie, we absolutely love this garden. Thanks so much for turning this into a wonderful, magical playland for the girls. It's incredible.